Good morning. Let me just read quickly the issue of assurance of salvation uh, from uh, Major Bible Themes by Louis Berry Schaefer, revised by Wolford, John F. Wolford. The importance of assurance. In Christian, in Christian experience, assurance that one is saved by faith in Christ is essential to the whole program of growth in, of grace in the knowledge of Christ. Assurance is a matter of experience and relates to the personal confidence in present salvation. It should not be confused with the doctrine of eternal security, which will be discussed in the next chapter. Eternal security is a question of fact, while assurance is a matter of what one believes at a given time concerning his personal salvation. So, what do you believe in eternal security not as a fact? Assurance of salvation is your confidence that you are really saved. That's what Ephesians 1, 12, and 13 is talking about. You're sealed. Whether you believe it or not. But your assurance is, is the fact that do you have confidence in your saved and it affects your walk. So that's really the issue of, uh, you know, dealing with is the gospel I believed really true? Did it really save me? Eternal security is a question of fact while assurance is a matter of, of what one believes at a given time concerning his personal salvation. Assurance of salvation depends on three major aspects of experience. Understanding of the completeness of the salvation provided in Jesus Christ. There's where Jesus Christ, you believe Jesus Christ died for your sins and of course. The conf uh, confirming testimony of Christian experience. Acceptance by faith of the biblical premises of, uh, promises of salvation. So you start getting assurance after you believe the gospel, then you get assurance by reading other scriptures that, that point to the fact that the gospel is truly efficacious. Then the next thing you learn about is eternal security. Security of salvation. While well, most believers in Christ accept the doctrine that they can't have assurance of salvation at any given moment in their experience, the question is often raised, can a person once saved become lo uh, uh, lost again? Since the fear of losing salvation could seriously affect the believer's peace of mind and because his future is so vital, is so vital this question is a great important aspect of the doctrine of salvation. Plus, so to theology. But it's not integral to the gospel. It's something you learn later because it will affect your walk. So a person can get saved without understanding eternal security, believing in eternal security, and can actually reject eternal security and be saved because he got the gospel right. That's the logical order in soteriology. When you, once you start learning the issue of the gospel, then you get saved. The next thing is being, you get your assurance down. That you're really rooting ground in this thing. Hey, you're really saved. The gospel is real. So you're learning about soteriology. And then you're learning about eternal security. But not only are you saved, you can't lose it. These guys just want to backload everything. Says, well, I, you know, I, you know, I certainly believe in eternal security. You can even believe in eternal security, you got saved. If that were true, you wouldn't need assurance. But all Christians have to learn about assurance. They need to know that the gospels that they believed in was really efficacious, that it was tr uh, the true gospel. So they can feel confident and not be blown back and forth by every false doctrine coming along and saying, well, no, you had to do this, you had to do that, you had to confess uh, Christ, you had to call on the name of the Lord, you had to do this, uh, you know, uh, repent of your sins. That's where all the doubt comes in, because they say, well, maybe I, maybe I need to do, uh, do the sin's prayer. Maybe I need to confess Christ, you know, Romans 10, 10, Romans 10, 10, 10, 9, 10. Maybe I need to call upon the name of the Lord. That's where it attacks the sure salvation. And the next thing is eternal security issues, but because now the, is, the sin issue becomes, and it comes in. Well, yeah, 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 the sins were forgiven, but, you know, they were, you know, you know, then he started questioning the idea, you know, that's conditional some, somehow. Or they were certain sins, you know, were, were forgiven. Other certain other sins won't if you, you know, if uh, you don't, uh, uh, if you do, uh, do sins that uh, 
that are too far out would they they would never forgive and they couldn't be forgiven, you know, so I didn't say the logic, I didn't say reason was reasonable, but that's what they teach and people fall for it. You know, the Armenian view, the Wesleyan view, the idea that oh yeah, yeah, you gotta live a certain life and live a life of perfection. Uh, you know, and that the idea you can't be do presumptuous sins. You know, deliberate sins, as they would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, this sins begin, but those deliberate sins are forget, so they make a division. But there's a, a soteriology encompasses the, how that salvation understanding comes together. And they want to put all that into the gospel. And then other guys will take everything out of the gospel and just say, wait, just, we just got to believe John 6 and 47. <laughs> you know, God gives eternal life to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. So they take everything out of the gospel. And it's that this is this tension that goes back and forth. But assurance is the next issue, major issue. If eternal, if you if you believe in eternal security, if, if eternal security is part of the gospel, you wouldn't need the issue of, of, of learning about having assurance. That you actually have it. That's what people learn. See, they, when people have had salvation for 50 years, like these guys, like uh, uh, Arnold, they forget all about assurance. They've forgotten it. They've forgotten they needed to know about it. They've forgotten it. They've had it so long, they never, they've forgotten how long they were assured of salvation. And they want to go back there, and they can't remember how it was when they were a, a beginning believer, that they need to have that assurance. They just say, oh yeah, I just believed it and that was it and I was assured and I was totally confident and everything. And we all know Christians always have doubts. But these guys who've been saved for a very long time want to go, oh no, no, you have total assurance, you know, you have total, you know, I believe in eternal security as soon as I was saved and I rejected. You know, you've forgotten what you were when you got saved, how, what, what the issues were. Because then you had to get confident. Rooted and grounded in the fact, yeah, I'm saved. This gospel is real. Because you attack now from all sides. Oh, it's too simple. Oh, it's, you know, oh, no, well, yeah, you can do it, you know, like, like the Galatians were. Oh, yeah, that's true, but, you know, you got to bring that uh, circumcision. You got to do this, bring this in. You got to bring that in. You need to do this, you need to do Romans 10, 13. You know, you need to repent of your sins. See? So some of those brought in. But these older preachers will forget that. They've been assured of salvation. They, they take for granted. But the scriptures don't teach that. The scriptures teach the next thing you, a Christian has to learn after he's saved is assurance. He gets rooted and grounded in the fact that, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's saved. Part of soteriology, part of salvation is fact, and then also eternal security. That once he's saved, he can't lose it. But they just, they've learned those doctrines and they've believed those doctrines for so long, they just think, why well, must I always believe them? See what happens? They believe those doctrines of assurance and eternal security so long, they think now they're actually part of the gospel. So let me stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.